Hello and good afternoon, Council, uh, staff, and to those of you who may be tuned in uh, via YouTube. Uh, I'll call this meeting to order for today is our special council meeting uh, today of Thursday, September 8th, 2022, and the time is 1.01 p.m. So at this time, I'll read the land acknowledgement. We respectively acknowledge that the Township of Asphodel Norwood is located on the Treaty 20 Mississauga Territory and in the traditional territory of the Mississauga and the Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Alderville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Islands First Nations. We respectively acknowledge that the Williams Treaty's First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, perpetuity and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. So I'll ask at this time, Council, for a moment of silent reflection so we may reflect upon our duties of today as Council. Please. Thank you. Is there any declaration from any councillors at this time of any pecuniary interest? And if there is, I'll ask now or at time of subject. All right, seeing no hands, thank you. Looking for a motion then to approve the agenda for today then, please. Uh, presented. Uh, Councillor War, seconded by Councillor Archer. All in favor? And then that's carried, thank you. So staff and committee reports, uh, R1 would be Candace White, who is our CAO clerk treasurer. And this report is regarding the Municipal Disaster Relief Fund. Candace, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Mayor. So approximately a week and a half ago, township staff became aware from um, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing that we were uh, eligible to move on to the next step of the Municipal Disaster Relief Fund. As a portion of that application that we need to submit, we need a resolution of council supporting the submission of the application. The application needs to be submitted within basically four months from the date of the disaster um, being May 21st. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of time um, from when you find out that you're moving on to the next phase until it needs to be submitted. So I do appreciate council putting the special council meeting together. Um, basically what you're going to see before you is kind of an outline of what the Municipal Disaster Recovery Assistance Program is and what exactly it means. So there's a threshold. Um, the threshold is 3% of the municipal taxation of the 2020 FIR. That is approximately $104,000. As you can see in the staff report, the actual expenses incurred to date, we're sitting at approximately 73,000 with invoices or work still to be completed for a total of approximately another 71,500 for a total of 144. Um, what that would mean then is if we were uh, fully successful with the provincial disaster program, then approximately 36,000 would be absorbed by the uh, tax base in order to fund that portion. That said, um, we've been working with the municipal insurers um, in regards to the town hall roof. Um, if that is covered by municipal insurance, and that would really be the only um, incurred expense that would be covered under any of our policies, then that cost of that would be removed, which is, uh, you know, 32, 33,000 would come out. And so we would still, um, even if, with, if that does get covered from insurance, obviously municipal staff will not be submitting that to the province to be covered under this program, but we would still meet the threshold. So basically um, all we're asking for today is uh, council's blessing to submit the application to the province to see if we can recoup some costs incurred from the storm. I'll take any questions. Yeah, thank you, Candace. Pretty detailed report. Um, Councillor War, please, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you through you, Mayor. Uh, just one uh, question. Um, are there any other potential concerns identified that may be coming forward that would uh, incur costs from the storm or have most of them already, like this is a complete list? Well, there is a couple of things. Um, one would be if the township undertakes an, um, a review of all of the trees. So we have an arborist come in and basically do a tree study 
um, on the trees that are remaining and highlight trees and kind of categorize them. Okay, this you need to take care of these trees year one, year two, year three. I suspect it would be a three year program that would not be covered um, under insurance or covered underneath this program. It would be covered by the tax base um, through the budget process. Um, as far as the costs of that, uh, township staff have reached out to a couple of, of service providers and are looking to include that in uh, budget deliberations. The second um, request that we've had is in regards to culvert cleanouts, um, in regards to plugged culverts. Um, some of them require a vac truck in order to clean them out. Um, there are some in the township that we just would, don't have the equipment. We'd need a back truck to pull them out. Um, that is an, another cost. So the public works manager needs to do an assessment and determine before spring flows how many we're going to actually be able to clean out this year. And it's going to be, there's a lot of culverts in this township. So it's going to be another one of those rolling, um, I guess, expenditures or activities that I suspect will highlight themselves in the spring. Uh, with the spring runoff and some of them will get done during that process because uh, the most sincere would be affected by them. But Mayor, I see Deputy Mayor Burt has her hand raised there. Yes, yep. Deputy Mayor Burt, I see your hand there, yep. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, and just another question on the report. Is there a deadline? You have the list of projects completed to date, the ones that are to be completed. Is there a uh, deadline for when those ones need to be completed in order to um, capture this funding? Uh, no, so we, there is a portion of the application that we can put futuristic costs. The province is understanding and aware of the fact that uh, due to COVID, even getting certain products, certain services, um, getting invoices for you know all of those sorts of things is um, a bit of delayed. So they are allowing for futuristic um, costs to be incurred because it's a four month window, but there's no way to get it completely uh, sewn up within the four months. Obviously we need to submit as much as we possibly can with actual costs, um, but some of it such as um, the tub grinder coming in, like uh, we're hoping we get that in November, you know, um, but end of October maybe, um, but again, they're in high demand. I mean, the two major storms across the province has put certain services like that. Um, they are definitely coveted and there's just not enough of them to go around. So we're all on a list. So to answer your question, um, we can enter future expenses um, with an explanation as to what they're for, um, why they haven't been completed to date. And it's basically a justification um, just due to the situation. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Great. Any more questions from Council at this time? Uh, Councilor Walsh, please. Yes, for you, Mayor. And actually, uh, Candace, you've already answered this question. My question was around the town hall and the roof and insurance. But to your to your point, even if we pull out the, the town hall roof, we're still above that threshold. So we're still okay to apply. Correct. Yes. And in any sense from, I know you said you've had some communication the last few days with insurance. I think any sort of sense what it may look look like? I think we're going to be fine. I think the insurance will probably cover it um, based on what I'm hearing from them. Um, that said, until I get that in writing, um, there's always that caveat, but the conversations have been on the positive side of things. They're just overwhelmed. And obviously there are um, clients of theirs that maybe don't have the resources like a municipality does you know, although we were hit hard and we experienced some hardships that were outside of the budgetary process due to mother nature, we have the coffers or the resources, you know, to, to keep things going. So their focus was those on um, maybe smaller businesses or homeowners that don't have those, didn't have those types of resources to be able to sustain without them. So that's municipalities were kind of pushed to the bottom. Thank you. Uh, order, please. Uh, thank you through you, Mayor. Um, just a follow up question. So the approximately 36,109.78, which is pretty accurate uh, towards the taxpayers uh, that might have to be funded. Uh, where on the budget 
um, or, you know, we have everything kind of um, budgeted for this year, um, where would that funding come out of what department and how do you see that happening? So under the provincial funding, we actually had to create an isolated general ledger account for all of these expenses to flow through that wouldn't be muddied by other regular operating or capital expenditures that would be experienced under normal operations by the corporation. So it's a separate GL. So it's as of, as of right now, it's sitting under administration. Um, so that's but it'll be highlighted when you see your quarterly reports or the budget as to this is the storm amount. But as of right now, that GL was created under admin. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Council, any other questions, comments, concerns? No. All right, seeing no hands then. Thank you, Candace, for your report. Uh, so at, this, at this time then, uh, we'd ask for a motion then for this R1 uh, Municipal Disaster Relief Fund that we accept this report and that we request the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing to activate the Municipal Disaster Recovery Program due to, due to the high cost that, uh, that we incurred on this storm of May 21st, 2022. Motion by Councillor Archer, seconded by Councillor Walsh. Any other discussion on the motion? All in favor? That's carried, thank you very much. And then uh, we'll have the confirming bylaw, please. Being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings as a special meeting of the Council of the Township of Aspidale Norwood held September 8th, 2022, be read a first, second, and third time in numbered bylaw 2022-39. Motion by Councillor War, seconded by Deputy Mayor Burt. All in favor? That's carried. And then the adjournment then would be the recommendation that we adjourn this meeting of today, September 8th, 2022, and the time is 1.12 p.m. And that our next regular meeting would be uh, September 27th, 2022, at 1 p.m. or at the call of the chair. Motioned by Councillor Walsh, seconded by Councillor Archer. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, well, thank you, staff. Thank you, council. Um, good meeting and uh, everyone be safe and get back to work, I guess, is what we can say there, right? <laughs> thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.